The Ukrainian armed forces continue to fight not only on the territory of Ukraine but also in Russia. Now, Ukrainian forces in Veseloy settlement. At the same time, Russian war correspondents claim that fighting in this settlement is being carried out by occupiers from the 56th Airborne Regiment. At the same time, the Ukrainian armed forces continue to fight along the entire salient in the Kursk region. Recently, fighting took place in the area of Lyubimovka, Pogrebki, Kremyanoi, Kamyshevka, and Cherkaski, Porichnoi. Russian Z channels write about the presence of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Olgovka area. Russian Z bloggers write that Putin's army counter-attacked Ukrainian forces but did not achieve significant successes. Ukrainian war correspondent Konstantin Mashovets reported that the forces of the 7th and 106th Airborne Divisions, the 810th and the 155th Marine Brigades of the Russian Armed Forces are trying to strengthen their positions, preparing for new attacks from the Ukrainian Armed Forces. According to him, the Russian Defense Ministry has currently concentrated about 41,000 servicemen in the Kursk region. In the near future, up to 6,000 more occupiers will be transferred. In this case, the underground movement Atesh reported a sabotage on a key railroad line in the Kursk region. The explosion of a relay cabinet will complicate the supply of the Russian army to the front. Our agents blew up a relay cabinet on one of the key railroad lines through which the Russian armed forces deliver equipment and ammunition to the Kursk section of the front line, Atesh reported. It is noted that this railroad line is of strategic importance as it provides a constant supply of the Russian army to the front line. Disruption of its operation weakens logistic support and complicates the transportation of important military equipment. The Russian forces planned to launch a major offensive in the Kursk region. However, it turned out to be a failure according to BUILD. As reported by the agency, Vladimir Putin announced in mid-August that by October the 1st, the Russian army must fully regain control of the entire Kursk region. However, the Russian counter-offensive stalled. Build noted that it was only on September the 17th that Russian tanks advanced south of Korenevo. Shortly after, the Kremlin extended the deadline, stating that the Russian army has time until mid-October to regain control over the territory held by the Ukrainian armed forces. Even this goal seems unlikely at the moment. Israeli Defense Minister Yov Gallant underlined the mission of the Israel Defense Forces to return the residents of the north to their homes during a visit with Israeli troops stationed at the northern border on Monday. He said to fulfill this goal, the IDF would employ all that is needed, your forces, other forces, from the air, from the sea and also from the land. The elimination of Nasrallah is a very important step, but that is not all, he added. Earlier Monday, Hezbollah's acting leader vowed to continue battling Israel and said the militant group was prepared for a long fight even after much of its top command was wiped out, including its leader, Hassan Nasrallah. In his first speech since Nasrallah was killed, Naim Qasim said in a televised statement that if Israel decides to launch a ground offensive, Hezbollah fighters are ready to fight and defend Lebanon. חיסול של נסראללה זה שלב חשוב מאוד, אבל זה לא הכל. אנחנו נפעיל את כל היכולות שיש לנו. ואם מישהו לא הבין בצד השני מה הכוונה כל היכולות, זה כל היכולות. ואתם חלק מהמאמץ הזה, אנחנו סומכים עליכם, שתהיו מסוגלים לבצע כל דבר. אני אומר כאן לאנשי המילואים ולאנשי הסדיר. כל מה שצריך לעשות, נעשה. המטרה שלנו זה להחזיר את תושבי הצפון לבתיהם. עבור החזרת תושבי הצפון לבתים שלהם, אנחנו נהיה מוכנים לעשות כל מאמץ. זו המשימה שלכם, זו המשימה של צה"ל, וזה מה שנעשה, ונפעיל את כל מה שצריך. הכוחות שלכם, כוחות אחרים, מהאוויר, מהים וגם מהיבשה.
Israel troops were deployed on Saturday near the border with Lebanon while tensions increased following the killing of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah. Hezbollah has confirmed that its leader of more than three decades was killed in an Israeli airstrike in Beirut on Friday. The group vowed to continue its fight against Israel even as Israel's attacks on Hezbollah targets pounded areas around Lebanon's capital. The United Nations says the number of those displaced from southern Lebanon has topped 211,000. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu abruptly cut short a visit to the United States to return home after saying that Israel's campaign against Hezbollah will continue.